Today we're looking at the Packard Bell Visio 243D 24-inch LED 1080p HD monitor. Two things I should say that although this is branded as a Packard Bell, is actually made by Acer, and though it has 3D in the title, this is not a 3D monitor. So, inside the box we have the stand for the bottom. We also have power leads, European and UK, the instruction guide, a quick installation guide, and a VGA cable. And we also have the neck for said mounting stand. Let's just take this out and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080p, which is fairly standard. 60 hertz refresh rate. It has a TN panel with an anti-glare surface, as you'll see shortly, as you see all my fingerprints that I've managed to put over it just on this very short unboxing part. It has a 5 millisecond response time. Its dimensions are 567 by 422 by 207 millimeters. The weight is 3.6 kilograms with the stand and 3.11 kilograms without. The horizontal viewing angle is 170 degrees. The vertical viewing angle is 160 degrees. The contrast is 100 million to 1 and the brightness is 250 candela per square meter. It has a 5 to 25 degree tilt. This is also VSAT mount compatible as you can see the holes on the back there. It features a VGA connection, a DVI connection, and the standard power lead. I should mention that this does not have a power brick with it, it is just a straight connection. Okay, so let's take a quick look at it, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Hi guys, okay so let's talk a little bit more about this monitor. First things first, I would like to say that this, although it is branded as a Packard Bell, is actually, as you may have noticed from the pictures at the start, is actually an Acer rebranded as a Packard Bell, which is a little bit of a trick there. I should mention this hasn't been on all that long, it is feeling quite warm. This reflective surface on it is like a magnet for thumbprints. I tried to wipe them all off when I was recording them, but just me going like this, put thumbprints all over it again, so if you're going to be someone who's going to be moving your monitor and all things like that, then maybe this isn't the monitor for you because that reflective surface just shows them up so badly. I mean, my hands went really dirty when I did that. Okay, so also the stand the stand that it comes with standard, it is compatible with a VESA stand, wall-mounted stand, wall-mounted stand, 100 by 100 at the back here. There are four holes at the back which you can mount it to a wall like that, or onto a, or onto one of those, a stand or something that goes like this, and you can move it around like that. Because this stand that it comes with isn't very stable. I mean, this is it here, and it's it's a, it's a bit wobbly, to be honest. I wouldn't want to, like I do with my other one, I don't know if you can see that in the picture, it's standing up above this one, and that one's quite stable, but this one does, it's got a bit of shake to it, so. But if you're keeping it like in front of you here on a nice flat surface, it shouldn't be too much problem as long as you're not going to like keep jogging everything like this. As for the specs that we went through, this one is pretty much on par with the Samsung one that I showed last week. I mean, they were of a similar price. This was actually even cheaper. Though it's a 24 inch, it was actually 79.99. Though it was on a special offer, it's normally about 100 and something low or 100 pounds or something like that, maybe. But to compare the two together, if we we can look at the white test now, though. To be honest, I couldn't see too much of a difference between these compared to my 1440p X-Star one that I didn't use this time because that's not to be compared to. But these can definitely be compared to in the same price range. There's only like this much bigger on this one. So let's have a look at the white on that. 
Okay, you can see maybe a, the Samsung one is a little bit duller maybe. I don't know. I'm not, not sure it shows up too well on the recording, but they're much more similar than the last test I did compared to the 1440p monitor, which wasn't really very fair. Okay. Uh, image quality wise, it does use a TN panel, not an IPS panel, so you can't expect like the absolute best sharpness, but pictures are they're pretty clear. Again, I don't know how well this comes across when I'm just using a camera across a monitor because, you know, it doesn't always show up very well like that. But it's really the best that I can do to show you what the monitor's like, so, yeah. So finally, in conclusion, for the price of this monitor, that it's, it's probably a good buy. If you're looking to get into the PC gaming market right now, this would be good. It's got a five millisecond response time, so that's pr it's pretty good for gaming. So if you are on a budget, this type of thing is a, is a really good starter. I mean, this or the Samsung one that we we looked at last week, they they would be they'd be good for starting you gaming. Okay. The only difference between this and the Samsung really is going to be that slightly bigger screen you get with this one. But again, it depends. If you can get this this one cheaper than the Samsung or the Samsung cheaper than this one, then I would recommend both. For starting to game, if you want to do like video editing and that, I would recommend maybe spending a little bit more money getting an IPS panel one. Or if you've got got just over two hundred pounds, then I'd absolutely recommend going for one of these Korean monitors here. I mean, my one. I've heard lots of good things from other people. My one was absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it at all, and it cost me about two hundred seven pounds. A fourteen forty p monitor over here like a Dell or something will be 500, 600, something like that. And it's, although you've not got much, obviously it's over the other side of the world, it's not really, you haven't got much go back with it, but it's a good punt to take. All I can tell you from my experience, it's been absolutely great. So if you have that type of money, you want a 27 inch 1440p monitor, it's, it, there's nothing else. I mean the Shimmyon you get as well, but I've got the X-Star one with the Samsung PLS panel on it, and that's, it's really good. I just I have nothing else to say on that. It's just brilliant. If you need a monitor and you have that type of money, get one of those. If you don't want to risk that, I haven't actually got any particular recommendations because I don't have I have four monitors, but I don't actually have one that I could recommend to you right now. I don't want to just guess at anything. Look at look at Amazon and say yeah, go on that one, that one, that one. So yeah, but I'll be looking for things to look out for. Would be a good make. A good panel by a good make, so like a good Samsung panel or LG PL PLS. Though uh, that's PLS isn't particularly easy to find, so an IPS panel will be very. You'll get much sharper image quality from it, and you'll be able to video edit on that. Though the response time maybe won't be quite as good on the lower end of the IPS panels, but IPS panel monitors. So, but if you're budget gaming, then. One of these will be absolutely perfect for you. I highly recommend it. There is one last thing I do want to say. Uh, Michael Wick, the guy with the amazing cat picture for your avatar. I can't reply to you because you're using like a Google Plus account or not using a Google Plus account or something or other than that. That's so you can ask me questions. I'm sorry, I can't actually reply to you. I've got no, if you look on the screen here, I have no reply button. I can reply to everyone else. I can't reply to you. As for the actual question itself, I haven't actually used the Corsair Vengeance 1400 headset. I know it's it's around the same price and it is a very good, I've read lots of other reviews that say it's very good. The microphone is probably of better quality and the earphones are probably kind of similar as well. I mean, Asus and Corsair are both very good brands, so unless I tried it, I couldn't actually give you a recommendation off the top of my head. Personally, because I've got the Asus one, I would go with that, and because I don't use the microphone very often with it. If you wanted to clear a microphone, then you'd probably be better off with the Corsair because the microphone on the Asus, it's not, it's not good, is it? It's not good. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you very soon.